Good Thursday evening, June 20th. Happy first day of summer and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. Washington's Department of Natural Resources is ending dispersed campfires for the season on its lands throughout our part of the state beginning on Friday. An East Wenatchee man is charged with a felony after allegedly violating a restraining order and destroying an estimated $12,000 worth of his partner's property. Unseasonably hot temperatures in our forecast tomorrow and Saturday. How long will the heat last? I'll let you know coming up in weather. A woman whose Wenatchee home held 60 animals in poor condition has pleaded guilty to 15 counts of animal cruelty. 65-year-old Maria Madrano ended her plea in Chelan County District Court in late May. Animal control officers served a search warrant on her house in March of 2023 and seized 44 dogs and 17 birds they say were poorly housed and suffering in unsanitary conditions. Two of the dogs later died and one had to be euthanized. Madrano was initially charged with 20 counts of animal cruelty, but Chelan County prosecutors dropped five of those charges with her plea agreement. Judge John Volan sentenced her to a day in jail with 29 days on electronic home monitoring plus $1,500 in fines. She is barred from having any pets for a two-year period of probation. Washington's Department of Natural Resources is ending dispersed campfires for the season on its lands throughout our part of the state beginning on Friday. The campfire ban for DNR's southeast region affects nearly 900,000 acres of state trust and conservation lands in 16 counties, including Chelan, Douglas, and Grant. Fires will still be allowed in approved and designated campgrounds, and propane or butane camp stoves are also permitted at dispersed sites. The DNR says the restriction is a critical step to reduce wildfire ignition sources while the fire danger remains elevated throughout the region. Kickball, yard games, and free food helped the YWCA North Central Washington celebrate Juneteenth yesterday afternoon. Juneteenth, celebrated on June 19th, became a federal holiday in Washington State in 2021. The holiday commemorates the day when the last enslaved African Americans in Galveston, Texas, learned from Union soldiers that they were free in 1865. YWCA Deputy Director Dusty Mahoney said the laid-back fun helps people People dip their toes in social justice and equity work. Mahoney also spoke about why she thinks people should celebrate the day. I think folks need to celebrate Juneteenth because it's important to realize that we're not all starting in the same place um, and that it's okay to want to work for the starting field to be leveled. It's okay to recognize those things and pledge to do better. And I think that Juneteenth gives us a chance to look at where we've been and where we're going and the work we have to do, but also celebrate the work that we've done. Festival goers headed to the Beyond Wonderland at the Gorge Amphitheater this weekend are encouraged to arrive early due to increased security. The Electronic Music Festival returns on Saturday a year after a shooting at the event took the lives of Brandy Escamilla and Jocelyn Ruiz, two nurses from Seattle who were engaged to be married. The festival says wait times to enter the campgrounds may range from two to three hours, with all persons and vehicles subject to search and attendees should be prepared to exit their vehicle. Firearms and weapons are prohibited from the campground entirely. The Washington State Patrol is also partnering with the Grant County Sheriff's Office to conduct high visibility enforcement during the festival with a goal to reduce collisions. When we come back, those who bet on Road Apple Roulette during the Apple Blossom Grand Parade back in May can rest assured their money went to a good cause. And 8th District Congresswoman Kim Schreier was in Wenatchee today to hear from local officials on the problems around affordable housing. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Now there are even more reasons to meet at the Pibus Market outdoor dining and tastings, the fabulous farmer's market, Saturday artisans on the concourse and your favorites all week long. 
No matter the reason, it's always time to meet at the Pibus Market. Pibus Market, where community meets. Caught in a conflict? Family? Workplace? Neighbor? Business? Housing disputes? Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us to learn more. Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. Let your voice be heard. I'm former Chelan County Sheriff Brian Burnett, and I'd like to be your District 12 State Representative in Olympia. With my extensive experience in law enforcement, I'm eager to serve you to ensure your community and neighborhood public safety. I intend to safeguard and improve your quality of life. I support your private property rights, lowering your tax burden, helping small business to thrive, fiscal responsibility, and your public safety. Paid for by the committee to elect Brian Burnett for State Representative. Those who bet on Road Apple Roulette during the Apple Blossom Grand Parade back in May can rest assured their money went to a good cause. On Saturday, the Wenatchee Sunrise Rotary Club, which sponsors the Road Apple Raffle, turned over $4,000 in donations to the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center, which was selected as the primary beneficiary this year. Other contributors helped boost the charitable giving with donations of their own for a total of $9,000 to the center. The Road Apple contest allows entrants to guess where the horse involved in the parade will deposit their droppings along the way and be entered into a raffle with a maximum $10,000 prize. An East Wenatchee man is charged with a felony after allegedly violating a restraining order and destroying an estimated $12,000 worth of his partner's property. 41-year-old Ryan Thomas Letts was arrested last week after Douglas County Sheriff's deputies said he poured bleach over several piles of the victim's clothing, poured more bleach over a mattress, and set fire to other household items. Police also say the next day in Wenatchee, Letts made verbal threats to kill the victim. In addition to the Douglas County malicious mischief charge for property damage. Letts is charged in Chelan County with felony harassment and court order violations. He was freed from jail on $75,000 bond and faces arraignment in both counties next week. 8th District Congresswoman Kim Schreier was in Wenatchee today to hear from local officials on the problems around affordable housing. Schreier's roundtable at Wenatchee City Hall brought together city officials from Wenatchee, East Wenatchee, and ENIAT, as well as affordable housing advocates, including Common Ground Land Trust and Our Valley, Our Future. Participants said market pressure has driven up home prices throughout the Wenatchee Valley and left many would-be homeowners without options. Schreier said she's been working to increase the affordability of housing in the 8th District and beyond through federal investment. Coming up next, it's Thursday, and that means Pause for Pets from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Tonight, we will introduce you to an adorable brother-sister dog duo. A moderate heat risk is in place for Friday and Saturday. We'll talk temperatures and more coming up in your full local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. Let Mary Maid's custom cleaning experts help you clean up your to-do list. Between work, kids, and pets, it's hard to find time to keep up. Let Mary Maid's of Wenatchee help. Mary Maid's cleaning experts can help keep your home or business fresh, neat, and exactly how you'd clean it, if only you had the time. Call now for a free estimate, 509-663-1710. Serving Chelan and Douglas counties, Mary Maid's, let us help. Welcome to the Columbia Basin Dispute Resolution Center. We are a local nonprofit serving Grant and Adams counties, helping businesses and people resolve difficult issues so they can move toward a better future. 
We offer help with workplace disputes, residential issues, family matters, and can train your staff in conflict prevention and resolution skills. Call us at 509-237-8401 to learn more. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. It's time now for our weekly Pause for Pets feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Tonight, we're featuring a brother-sister duo. Kiara and Kovu are playful little rascals in search of their forever homes. Pause for Pets is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Merry Maids, Doghouse Brewery, Leavenworth, and Club Crow Bar and Grill. Hi, I'm Corla with Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, animal care manager here. And these two pups are Kiara and Kovu, and they are siblings. They're, we think, maybe four to five months old, um, but we don't really know because they came to us as strays. They were roaming the streets of Wenatchee together, causing havoc and just having puppy fun. Like most puppies, they're learning all sorts of new things here and they want to be with their people so much. They are so excited when a volunteer comes in and walks them or when just when they get any kind of attention from people. That's their absolute favorite. They like toys too, but they really love it when a person is throwing a toy for them. Yes, yes. They want to learn so much, so bad. Oh, you're licking my hand, so good. <laughs> um, they're German Shepherd mix. Uh, we think, but they're beautiful. Yes, and they have, it's hard to tell here, but they each have one floppy ear. <laughs> so it's hard to tell you guys apart. Yeah, like you're so good. <laughs> uh, they love going on walks and um, they, they love fetch and they just love anything to do with people really. We've had them for too long. We don't like to have puppies too long because you know it's kind of a scary place, all the noise, all the dogs here and we've had them for about two weeks now, so they really need homes. Because they came to us as strays, we don't have any information on if they're good with cats, but uh, they do seem to love our dogs here. So I think they'd probably be good with your dog. And, oh, and they do not have to be adopted together. They're not bonded, they, they love playing with each other, but they don't have to go together. They just each need a home. So if you'd like to come and meet them, we are open Thursday through Tuesday, uh, 12.30 to 6.30, and we would love to introduce you. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchehumane.org. Pause for Pets is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Merry Maids, Doghouse Brewery Leavenworth, and Club Crow Bar and Grill. The Humane Society's Superhero Special on both dogs and cats has been extended through the end of this week. Dogs who have been at the shelter more than 20 days are 80% off and cats are buy one, get one half off. There are many animals still looking for their forever home, so if you can, stop by. Let's take a check now of your North Central Washington weather forecast and what a perfect way to usher in the first day of summer. The summer solstice happened about 1.20 this afternoon and that's where the North Pole's axis tilts toward the sun and that gives us the longest day of the year. This will be the most light that we see. Now we'll start losing some daylight all the way until December 21st. But it was a beauty out there today outside our weather window. Looking down at the Wenatchee Valley from our Sky 5 
satellite tower camera up on Wenatchee Heights. All kinds of blue sky out there today and temperatures well above normal throughout most of north central Washington and get ready for that trend to continue. We have a moderate heat rest risk as we move into Friday, tomorrow, and then once again on Saturday. Stay in a cool place during the heat of the day you, if you can. All of you uh, have common sense when it comes to heat and use that on Friday and Saturday, especially heat sensitive people as we get into Saturday. All right, elevated fire weather concerns. We will have a cold front following this heat. That'll move through on Sunday where we could see wind gusts between 25 and 35 miles an hour and with already dry conditions out there, low humidities and still plenty of warmth on Sunday, we could have those elevated risks. So be awfully careful if you are outside on Sunday. 85, our unofficial high temperature today. Beautiful way to bring in the first day of summer. 79 is our normal high. 97 degrees, our record high set back in 1982. 55 this morning, pretty much right in line with where we should be at 56 this time of year. Our record low, 47 degrees, and that was set in 1997. Sunrise this morning, 504, and it sets tonight at 901. Should be a beautiful evening. Hope you have the chance to get out there and enjoy it. Temperatures as we get into Friday, Here's part of that moderate heat risk. 92 for Moses Lake and Afreda. Also Quincy at 92. 91 at Ellensburg, Wenatchee, all the way up through Highway 97. Eniat and Chelan. OMAC as well, about 91 tomorrow. Kashmir, 90 degrees and 86 up in Lake Wenatchee. So it is warming up as we get into the end of the week. Tonight, clear skies, and this is the reason we're warming up. This area, ridge of high pressure. High pressure is sitting pretty much much right now in Nevada, but it's bringing up all of that warmth from the south. We're going to see low 60s tonight for overnight lows. For Friday then, look at all of the sunshine throughout Washington State. We're going to warm up into those low 90s as we get you into Friday, and it will be hot all over the western U.S., but not as hot as Saturday. Once again, a sunny day is expected. Very light winds on Saturday. We're going to warm up into the low and maybe mid 90s as we get you into Saturday. Saturday, so that will be our hottest day. And then on Sunday, there's that area of low pressure. It's going to sit over Saskatchewan, but it's dragging a cold front with it. And we're going to see a few clouds, but really windy conditions on Sunday. Cooler temperatures too, as we are going to cool down into the low 80s on Sunday. So at least a 10 degree cool down between Saturday and Sunday. And then for Monday, maybe just some breezy conditions. Sunshine for Monday. Very nice out there with high temperatures to kick off our next work week into the low 80s. Getting you into Tuesday as we kick it into gear for next week. Sunny skies once again, and we are going to warm up just slightly with high temperatures in the mid 80s for Tuesday, and it is hot all over the west and central U.S. as we get into next week. And then by the end of our forecast on Wednesday, once again, ridge of high pressure up and over us. There's that high now over Colorado, but we're still going to see the warmth from that with high temperatures Wednesday in those mid 80s. All right, your seven day forecast 61 overnight tonight, 91 Friday, 93 your high on Saturday. And look at these overnight lows. Hope you have plans heading into this weekend. Should be gorgeous out there. Not so much Sunday though, even though we will see a lot of sunshine. Also going to see a lot of wind with high temperatures cooler at about 82 degrees. And then for your Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, awfully nice weather. Sunny and warm, 83 Monday. 86 Tuesday and 84 your high temperature on Wednesday. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this.
Well, a good Thursday, Tanner Bybee struck out 12 over six innings as he and three relievers combined on a three-hit shutout of the Mariners in Cleveland's 8-0 victory last night. Josh Naylor hit two home runs and drove in half of the Guardians' runs in the blowout win. Josh comes into tonight. He's sixth in the American League with 50 runs batted in. Wide right base hit right field. A run will score. Ramirez all the way to third. One nothing. Guardians. Josh Naylor RBI number 51 on the year. And that'll give Juan an opportunity now with two outs to add on to this one nothing game. Drill deep right field. If it's fair, it's gone. It is up the pole. A two out two run homer for King Kwan. He stays absolutely red hot at the plate. His fifth home run of the year extends his hitting streak to 13 games. He'd be 39 points ahead of Bobby Witt for the batting lead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Off balance throw by Bliss and beats it out. Coming home to score is Jimenez. The run and gun Guardians do it again. How about stealing a run right there? Just outstanding hustle by Jimenez and Ramirez. Josh Naylor, see if Baldwin lays one in there. He's swinging, and it is not coming back. Oh, baby! Another two-out, two-run homer. Makes it a three-run fifth for the Guardians. Naylor's 18th on the year, and he has driven in three on the night. Crawford behind. Strike three called. Man, that high strike. Yeah, JP. JP's got to watch out right now, and he just got run. That storm has been brewing since yep. the first pitch of the game, and JP is really hot. Can't blame him, to tell you the truth. And now Scott just got run. Yep. That was just a matter of time. JP's a passionate player. We know that. I've never seen him that passionate before. I mean, he really got an Eddings face, and you could see this one coming a mile away. Shortstop, and now he's made himself into a center fielder. That, that versatility. Base hit right field. Bo Naylor brings around Daniel Schneeman. He'll score. And it's 7-0 Guardians. Naylor with his second hit of the night. This guy comes up and hits a 3-0 pitch out of the ballpark to tack on two more. There's a hanging curveball, and it is hit high and deep and gone. Yeah, he doubled up. It stayed up on a breaking ball, and he's seen it well, and he's staying back. Stay behind that pitch and just drives it to right. So he'll take the team lead now with 19. Give him four ribbies. And Josh Naylor, what a night. Four runs driven in. Two home runs. The 0-2. Chopped to short. Schneeman. Book it. Guardians are back in the win column. Seattle batters struck out 14 times in the game as the Mariners continue to lead off uh, all of Major League Baseball in strikeouts with 758 Ks this season. That's not good. Hey, the two teams wrapped up the three-game series with the rubber match today in Cleveland. The uh, Guardians came out on top 6-3. Dylan Moore hit his eighth home run of the season in the first. A two-run shot. Seattle now heads for Miami to begin a three-game series tomorrow. By the way, we do have highlights. That'll be tomorrow morning on Wake Up with Anchi Valley. Texas and Houston each game a game and a half on Seattle in the American League West standings. This is up to date as of right now today. Rangers beat the Mets last night 5-3 while the Astros topped the White Sox 4-1. Other AL West action last night. Milwaukee blanked the Angels 2-zip. Oakland won its second straight down in Kansas City 5-1. Well, the big question this offseason for Seahawks fans is how different things will be under Mike McDonald after 13 seasons with Pete Carroll. With rookie camp OTAs and mandatory minicamp now in the books, uh, one theme that has carried over is about competing. Reporters watching practice have said over and over that the level of competition has been intense. One battle of interest between two second round or make that second year players in wide receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba and cornerback Devin Witherspoon. JSN says Spoon is showing his leadership at all levels. Yeah, I, I think he's been doing an awesome job just being vocal, you know. I mean, to me, he looks like, you know, the captain of the defense, making sure every everybody's lined up and just using his voice more, just leading into year one to year two. Um, and, yeah, I mean, he's been great. He's a phenomenal player, you know, all pro. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, always, I'm a big fan of him, so just definitely excited to watch him take the steps you know physically you know he's getting bigger he's getting faster um, and just more comfortable being smarter he plays extremely fast and um, 
you know, we all know how physical he is, you know, in the run game or whoever has the ball. So, man, I'm glad he's on my team. You know, I get to go against him every day and, you know, can only get better from that. Seattle finished nine and eight last season, third in the NFC West. Training camp begins in just a little more than a month from now. The Apple Sox used two three-run innings to top Yakuba Valley last night, 6-3 to three in West Coast League play. Antonio Gianni and Cannon Peary helped drive the bus offensively, while Steven Hemmergren pitched two and a half third innings of relief for the win. We get more on the story from the voice of the Apple Sox, Joel Norman. The Apple Sox evened up their midweek series against the Yakima Valley Pippins with a 6-3 victory last night at Yakima County Stadium. Wenatchee recorded three runs in two different innings, first scoring three runs in the fifth inning thanks to three consecutive men reaching with two outs to plate runs. And then two innings later, the Apple Sox were able to add on as they led only 3-2 to two at the time with the Pippins scoring in three straight frames. But before they scored for a third consecutive frame, Wenatchee struck three times in the top half and added to its lead as each of the first six hitters of the top of the seventh inning reached base and the first three would all come around to score. Luca Boscarino extended his hitting streak to six games, drove in another run. He has played at three through the first two games of this three-game set. The rubber match between the Pippins and the Apple Sox is tonight. It'll be at 7.05 p.m. at Yakima County Stadium. With your Apple Sox update, I'm Joe Norman. The hotter temperatures means games in Yakima Valley will move back a half hour to avoid the heat, so tonight's game starts at 7.05. Bellingham won its fifth straight with a 3-2 victory over Kamloops last night. Edmonton Mines are probably more on hockey than baseball. Kelowna came out on top 12-3. Victoria doubled up Nanaimo 4-2. Richfield down Port Angeles 11-3. Another WCL South action. Springfield handed Corvallis consecutive losses for the first time this season, downing the night 6-zip. Walla Walla edged Bend. 6-5. Cowlitz pop Portland 9-5. When Anchi's lead in the WCL North remains two games over Bellingham and three in front of Edmonton. Victoria remains four games back while Nanaimo is five and a half games out of first place. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Granstrom. Have a happy Thursday. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night. Tune in Monday through Friday at 5, 6, and 10 for the NCW Life Evening News or go to our website at ncwlife.com or you can visit us on Facebook. North Central Washington, the NCW Life Channel has you covered. Punch your ticket to the playoffs no matter what happens. Wenatchee Apple Sox Baseball is back on the NCW Life Channel. Tune in Monday, June 24th when the Apple Sox take on the Kelowna Falcons. Coverage is brought to you by our platinum supporter, Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, and our gold supporter, the Town Auto Group. Apple Sox Baseball also brought to you by Apple Valley Honda, Club Crow Bar and Grill, the Chelan Douglas Community Action Council, and AmeriCorps, your television home for Apple Sox Baseball, the NCW Life Channel. And Carson with his first home run.